four liter of displacement, six cylinders, naturally aspirated engine, manual gearbox. We're going old school today on Autogefühl with a new car. Because so far Porsche has reserved this setup for the GT4 and the Spyder. But now 718 Boxster and 718 Cayman come as GTS 4.0 here with this special setup. All about this one an exterior, interior and the driving experience off the racetrack and on the racetrack with the Cayman, also with our special guest Mark Weber here today. And everything of that, Thomas and Jonas behind the camera in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! So we had several versions of the Boxster and the Cayman so far. We also linked them in the video description in the pinned comment. So later after this review you can enjoy even more. Here the headlamps come with Xenon as standard and optional LED in general for the Boxster and the Cayman. And the GTS models have the black contrast right there and a bigger opening. They have overall the sportier scheme and of course a lot of black elements on the outside and here we can again see the direct difference between the xenon lights you had just have the four led dating running lights around but the main headlamp unit here is the xenon optionally also available with the dynamic light function and then the full led lamps optional they are also available with the dynamic led function so both optionally uh, available with dynamic lighting and you can see led data running light a little bit bigger and wider also for that structure but then the main headlamp unit here is also full led so here again the full led unit and the base xenon unit well i mean so many options already on this car and it's so expensive but then again another option that is missing so so many things optional even still in the GTS trim. 4 meter 38, 14 foot 4 or 172 inches is the length of the Boxster or the Cayman. The only difference of course Boxster and Cayman is the roof so everything we'll tell you today will basically count for both vehicles. Besides here you can of course close the roof and it's um, oh and I can't move too far away with the key I don't just want to give you a better view I have to stay close to the car Obviously for safety reasons that I'm not like closing it from 100 of meters away and then maybe someone is getting his hands in there or something. So that's how the car, just giving you a free look, how it looks like with the closed top and pretty muscular, especially with these 20 inch wheels. So usually the GTS 4.0 setup is black 20 inch wheels. Here in this vehicle, there's a different option, just another wheel style, how it looks like with non-black wheels. But black wheels would be the typical GTS style. But I mean, it's just a matter of preference which one you like better. You see the yellow brake, brake calipers here, by the way. These are the special ceramic brakes, so you can go for them, but they are very, very expensive. And of course, this one is already more expensive. It's a couple of thousand euros less expensive than the Spider. Same counts also for the Cayman vs. GT4 but it's also a couple of thousand euros more expensive than the normal four-cylinder GTS, so it's exactly in between. The cool thing is, of course, easy and clean design lines. That's what's making the car still beautiful. The big air intake for the midship engine concept, as you might remember or maybe don't know, the 911 has a rear engine concept. This one here, midship engine concept, because the engine sits right below that both in the front and in the rear with the GTS models in general you have the black tinted background here so front and rear lights it's making a more aggressive look also have the black spoiler right there both for the 718 Boxer GTS and the 718 Cayman GTS and the 4.0 models have a special exhaust system of course there's you know 
little more fume coming out. So they also split it a little bit more open. So usually it's centralized, but here it's left and right. So a little bit more space in between. Again, this is a more, you know, bigger stance look, even from this exhaust port here. And suspension-wise, talking by the way, also interesting, the GTS 4.0 models, they come with the PASM as standard, also with the other GTS models the same, this is the Porsche adaptive suspension. In this case here, you can pick also either 20 millimeters lower or 10 millimeters lower, so depending on you know, how aggressive sporty you want to have it. Let's do some engine talk. You know, in the previous generation, it was still all about the six-cylinder naturally aspirated engines, but in this current generation here, they move more towards the four-cylinder concept. And I mean, you can understand it somehow because of the CO2 fleet emissions, yes, but also this is supposed to be a lightweight car and somehow it also makes sense. So usually you get a two-liter four-cylinder engine, a flat turbo, either with 300 horsepower then in the base version or in the Boxer T, this lightweight model. Then there is the S model, which already comes with the 2.5 liter four-cylinder flat turbo, then with 350 horsepower. Same engine goes to the four-cylinder GTS with 365 horsepower, the fastest model with 4.1 seconds in the acceleration figure. And then the recent GT4 and the Spider actually at 4.4 seconds and this then here 4.5 seconds 400 horsepower for this six cylinder four liter of displacement 420 horsepower it would be for the gt4 and the spider and the acceleration figures is 0.1 seconds so that's really nothing but indeed there is a big difference here from this six cylinder gts to the four cylinder gts but what's the reason for that it's indeed this, the manual gearbox. It's not the weight, the weight difference, six cylinder and four cylinder is just 30 kilograms, so it's nothing significantly. It's just the manual gearbox. So when this one will come with the dual clutch transmission, the six cylinder GTS will be faster than the four cylinder GTS. Um, at the moment, it's the way that manual gearbox comparing, four cylinder GTS manual gearbox, or the six cylinder GTS, manual gearbox this one here the bigger one is 0.1 seconds faster so it's just slower overall because it was the comparison manual gearbox versus the pdk again pdk versus pdk then the more powerful engine will also win because it's not significantly heavier the interior of course with the convertible we can look at it a little bit better it's easier to take a look at it inside of the doors or with the gts scheme alcantara and red contour stitching fitting to the carmine red exterior color then the carbon fiber inlet right here and this classic sporty look alcantara steering wheel here in the gts package so it's both the same for the four cylinder and the six cylinder gts Really cool the steering wheel and the drive mode selector is right there. Right side to control the digital instruments. There's just one part of digital from the instruments. And the left side then for the volume control. And you can already see this the big analog red GTS RPM meter. Left side then for the speed and the right side is then digital. You can for example also put a GPS view in there that's of course coming quite handy. As for the seats, GTS is always with Alcantara this microfiber surface. The middle part is animal free. Sadly they do use animal parts on the exterior of the seat like here which is not necessary. No one would actually feel or know the difference if it would be leatherette. They are also for you know the Boxster or the Cayman in general those sport tech seats available which is fabric probably even cooler in summer. But then when you order uh, you know, the animal skin free seats, then you get additional leather parts somewhere else. So it's not really logical. 
but it's already you know moving in a good direction this is here the bucket seat definitely a sportier version so you can flip it actually like this um, there's carbon fiber at the back part it's a lightweight part and I'm not sure if you want to store something there but you can only flip it you cannot adjust the back part it will always stay upright but it's in a good upright position because you need to sit upright anyway and most people when they're sitting in the car they're sitting not upright enough but again this is an option this bucket seat usually it would come with a sport seat already with the gts sport seat but also then with the alcantara setup and indeed having also on the steering wheel and on the seat is good because you slide less especially when you are for example the race track or in you know in, in the corner and something bucket seat here has a little bit more support here and there which seat is the best for you it really depends on the body posture the thing is it's such a great driving machine no matter in which version i've been driving the 718 but i could never find a proper seat where i would say it would be long term suitable that's for example better in the bmw z4 and yes you know folks at bmw also said probably that they had the six-cylinder bmw z4 new generation maybe it was also an influence that porsche went back here now with the six cylinders uh, also in the 718 yeah that's how it sometimes goes on the market a little bit back and forth so we'll um, see later on the driving part how it goes like with the seating comfort here in these bucket seats usually more standard seats are a little bit more open in the driving position and so on and i want me this 86 or 6 foot 1 and indeed it is still does fit even when i close the roof so i can do it here right now and you can see it again in live time how long it takes it doesn't take that long and the soft top is of course pretty cool and so easy oh tension <laughs> the window goes up when you keep holding it of course so in here i still have even enough headroom when the roof is closed and at very high speeds the cayman will be more silent on the interior maybe like 1 or 21 30 kilometers or like one you know 70 80 miles plus then the softer will be you know a little bit noisier than the closed cayman other than that for most other speeds these are so well insulated nowadays that you don't feel so much difference also normal road driving i can already tell you on the race track as a professional driver you feel that cayman is more stiff you know from the body but no normally driving it's more the question do you want that open top or not and i always say hell yes i do <laughs> so seat i can just move then front and back and the steering wheel up and down in this case here the manual part here we go and by the way if you're interested in the comparison 718 versus 911 we also have a video of that we'll also link that so tune into this video also later please so here's the interior which is still somewhat old school of course it's not the newest car but it does the job definitely these vents here they have been rearranged with the recent facelift a couple of years ago sports chrono package also includes this analog clock then and also puts down the acceleration time then you have this integration of the infotainment system with apple carplay right here and you can go back to the porsche menu like this there's also the gps right there the map here you can zoom in and out does the job actually quite good and easy the system and still with a lot of um you know real hotkeys all the climate unit can be accessed really but quite small also to reach is um, then while driving seat heating and ta-da here it is the manual gearbox six speed and you hear how crisp it is when you put in the gears or just when the car is stationary so pretty amazing Let's find out about the gear ratios because it has been criticized with the GT4 and the Spider review here and there, maybe like too long second gear. I'm looking forward to test it very soon. And now, very important information. It will later also come, so, or maybe if you watch the review at the later stage, it's already there, with the dual clutch transmission with the Porsche with the PDK. So this will be then a possibility also for the GT4 and the Spider, but so far, for manual shifting enthusiast but later on also then with the automatic gearbox as you know it then later on uh, lower down here you can actually activate the wing and the exhaust node separately the PASM can put the suspension a little bit stiffer here in this case for the convertible open the top or close it 
some space. I mean, do we want to really smoke in the 718? I'm not sure. And then there's this nice Alcantara cover here for the armrest, where you connect your smartphone with just one USB device, and that's basically it. Well, about storage, this is a problem with the car. So the glove box is almost nothing. But hey, there's a USB device, an additional for charging. And cup holders are right here, and they are, yeah, a little bit strange, have always been. Um, especially when cornering pretty fastly with, um, you know, something with a glass bottle in there. Hmm, not too good, actually. And in the side, you have a very slim box and then an additional one which you can open and then maybe for sunglasses or something but yeah space is indeed very limited here well you don't have too much space in the cabin but actually 718 boxer and even more so the 718 came in they have two trunks so the trunk and sorry <laughs> the and the normal trunk and this is actually quite versatile I mean, you can even put cabin trolleys in like this. This even works and will close. So this is the height of in the front, about 46, 47 centimeters, and in the rear, even a little bit more, a little bit less than 60. And the width here is about, yeah, you know, almost you know, about 70 centimeters. So it's actually quite cool. And the last here, 46 so you can get along with that actually pretty well already in the front well either from the inside left next to you when you're sitting on the driver's seat or then again on the key you can open also the rear trunk here we go and this is let's say a little bit easier as for the accessibility because you do not have to open this second stage of that and it does work to put a backpack in like this when you squeeze it just a little bit you know this is Maybe not the best solution, maybe then like this or something. Put it like this and this already works then and it closes. Let's open it once again and you see here this is then the easier solution because it goes just a little bit faster. And as for the measurements here, the height in the rear is about 33 centimeters, in the front 25. And the width, it's actually quite notable. So this in the front then, about 80 centimeters, but down there this is even wider you know and also up there so this is even more than a meter so down there if you use the holes so again for two people and luggage so camera equipment and so on we didn't have any problems and a direct seating comparison here you can see the sports seats of the gts this not even the base seat from the Boxster itself, but already the GTS sport seat. And you can see the Alcantara on the middle part, and they're a little bit wider if you compare it to the bucket seats. And both seats actually can be flipped. And then you also have this hanger here on the top part, so you can maybe, if you move it a little bit to the front, put a jacket or something up there, or maybe like a slim bag behind the seat or something, and taking a test seat right here. So in comparison to the bucket seat, these here are a little bit more open, so we can move around a little bit more freely. And to me also then the most comfortable you can get for the GTS versions. I would really stick with the base setup you get directly from the GTS. So, and steering wheel is of course the same. So in comparison here, it feels you know, really like open, freely to move around. But of course, in comparison to non-sporty seat, you already you know got a lot of shoulder support and so on. And then let's move over. So this is bucket seat number one. Very interesting. Two and a half thousand euros or two two thousand seven hundred extra. You can flip them, yes, but there's no hanger behind. Maybe to put the back or something. But actually, they are flippables here because they are taken from the Porsche 911. Same available in the 911. Pretty interesting. They do feature carbon fiber already, so they are actually already lighter a little bit but also more expensive and I mean considering for bucket seats they are still somewhat comfortable again comfortable for the 718 
not comfortable overall automotive industry. You have more shoulder support right here and that also takes a little bit of weight off the lower back. That could be an advantage. So I think it depends also on the, you know, on, on the body posture if this or the base seat will be more comfortable. Um, from, you know, sitting in here just like a couple of seconds then you would think the more open seat is more comfortable. Longer run, it really depends on your body, which will be better than, you know. So um, just have to take a test ride yourself, I guess. But it can never be, you know, bad to go with base seats, actually, because then also save the money. And last but not seat, last but not seats, yeah. <laughs> last but not least, here the bucket seat number two. And this is, uh, I think, uh, over 5,000 euros extra. So again, even more expensive than the bucket seat number one and they here they cannot be flipped they are even slimmer they are almost all full all out of carbon fire that's also why they're um, so expensive and you see they're also deeper and slimmer so you really you know almost sink in them and yeah the they are really uncomfortable so um, you know the other decision May, might depend on your body and you can argue with the better shoulder support but they are that slim so to me they give less support than the other bucket seat and um, from my height I really touch the carbon fiber part here so where it's not bolstered so I, I really like feel um, you know like touching now like the they are direct uh, plastic part or the carbon fiber here so that's really you know not recommendable um, at all Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge, open top here with a 718 Boxer GTS 4.0. We're gonna have a lot of fun, we put it in sports mode to have some more throttle input and exhaust sound. And enjoy something of this manual gearbox here as well. And since they have a pretty long gearing in the second gear, most of the time you just keep it in second gear and that's basically it. In the city and so on, it wasn't too negative, so it was actually quite okay. And the thing is here with the naturally aspirated engine, you don't drive it that low revving and use the, use the turbo or something. You rather put it to higher RPMs and really use these RPMs then, you know, and keep it, for example, in the lower gear. That's how it works. Of course, you can also shift up if you like and the crisp shifting is really a lot of fun. You know I'm a fan of automatic gearboxes because they're just more comfortable in everyday driving life, but sometimes, you know, in a car like this or in a Mazda MX-5, for example, this can actually be a lot of fun. And, well, you don't need to shift that often and cruising here at about 70 kilometers an hour, you can keep it rather silent also, for example, in the third gear, or if you want to attack it a little bit more, put back to the second one, and you maybe heard it, when we are here in the sport mode and we shift back, there's an automatic dual clutch. Could be German Zwischengas, the famous German Zwischengas. That's like the direct translation is like, you know, throttle in between, so to say, here again. So the car is doing that for you to match the revs then to get better in the next gear and have a better performance by the app. If it makes such a difference in everyday driving life is of course doubtful. It's more than a fun feature in, in this case um, when you're just driving on the street. Or for example, let's say from second to fourth gear is a little bit, little bit, but of course the bigger effect is needed when you put it from third into second gear. And a lot of fun here driving open top precise steering, great grip with the microfiber steering wheel and suspension is actually not too uncomfortable because it is an adaptive one. Yes, it's low definitely and the GTS is sporty but it's still somehow adapting to the road surfaces and it's just so much fun. It's a pure driving machine this car. Really very very cool and it is one of the cars that has the best handling, the best neutral um, you know, centrally balanced handling because of the midship engine concept and it's really way more fun than driving a 911. We also had it in our comparison and also easier to drive definitely. The weight balance is just way better. So 
this is actually here still a true portion and of course especially with the naturally aspirated engine concept and the manual gearbox this is let's say together i would say really with the boxster t even though it's a four cylinder with the rate reductions and so on that's how you know porsche was originally originally like you know so here for example going uphill second gear rev matching giving it a little bit more on the go and i mean you sometimes would think oh there's no turbo or something so there's not that spontaneous acceleration mm, no not really so this um four liter engine has so much horsepower that you still get it so much direct throttle input you really don't need the turbo you have enough horsepower for that even if you are in the low revs no problem wow this is really amazing now you can keep it in the second gear of course we'll soon see more about real high speed than when we are on the racetrack with the Cayman this is here of course a little bit you know performance enjoyment with keeping it according to traffic laws later on then hitting it really on the race trip. this is here already so much fun and probably what I would do most with this vehicle really very cool I can keep it in second gear all the time if I like to very precise in the corner wow really cool and this would probably also the reason why we would go for the six cylinder um, to have this sound because oh there's a tuned Miata I mean whoa what the hell I mean it's the four cylinder is really cool the weight difference is not that much and it's totally fine with this vehicle this six cylinder is really more about the sound and I have to say the naturally aspirated engine just has a more linear power output so it feels in a way, it says naturally aspirated and it feels in a way more natural because of how the power is being delivered you know with those turbos you maybe wait just a brief second and then the power sets in a little bit more spontaneously after this half a second um, but here it's more linear this power output and this somehow feels more human you know if you can talk about that with the machine and Wow, look at that this slalom characteristics I mean that's no matter which engine you have with the 718 it's just awesome so again there's hardly any other car that has this perfect handling this perfect balance handling this is really amazing and suspension wise I don't feel it's here in the GTS version less comfortable than in one of the others that's also totally fine this bucket seat so far is also holding up quite well um, not because it would be super comfortable but rather because the other seats are also uncomfortable <laughs> so yeah that's the thing with this car it's not the most comfortable one yes but so far I'm actually you know I'm quite happy um, of course we you know I didn't like floor it out so much here mm, before this area started here at about 12 years and one kilometers fuel economy about 20 mbg something um, so again can't expect one of, of that um, it depends on I mean um, the natural aspirated engine do not have to be more fuel consuming than the smaller turbos it really depends on how you drive it and you know situation if you use cruise control and so on you can put it even in fourth gear then it's actually even silent in the sport mode um, it's really interesting here by the way when you shift in the normal mode third to second there's no dual clutching then again when you are in the sports mode third to second there it is and it's good that you can hear it actually because we have this open top really cool I can keep the same speed up here all the time the allowed speed great cornering enjoying the landscape here together with us this is what we could call auto fuel auto fuel direct translation is car feeling or the feeling or enjoyment of driving a car and yeah that's why whoa yeah those situations are where our motorcyclist friends and I'm yeah you know motorbike driver myself um, 
where you could cut the head off. So that's, yeah. Driving a convertible is, and especially in the sporting convertible, is probably the thing that gets closest to driving a bike, a motorbike, you know, if you want so. So if you want to be a little bit safer, then maybe go for a car like this. It's a little bit wet still the road, but overall good grip conditions we have. And this is something I could do all day, definitely. So, how would I rate it now, the four cylinder versus the six cylinder? Hmm. On the one hand, you can score some great acceleration if you really rev it up, which we will do on the racetrack. On the other hand, I feel that you rather drive a little more settled with this one, you know? Because the turbo is, in comparison to this one, let's say a little bit more nervous. So this one all, you know, also feels a little bit more elaborate, I would say. And of course, with the more sonora sound, that's definitely a cool thing. So in this respect, I would maybe prefer the six cylinder. The manual gearbox here is really cool what they did. Mm, I don't find it the big problem here with the gear ratios. I think I was quite fine with that. Um, maybe we were different on the race track or something, but so far actually quite happy with that. It's totally okay. And um, then if you would have a problem with that, you can go with the dual clutch transmission. The only thing that will be a big factor at the end of the day, to me the Boxster is more like, also they came in more like a Boxer T, you know, like a purest sports car. And here in this version then, you know, a normal one, you can get like 50k something, 50,000 euros, dollars, Boxer T, or then the GTS, more like 60, 65. Then the 4.0 is already at about 80. And now, like with all the extras, okay, we have the ceramic brakes and stuff and so on. This car, as we are driving right here now, is almost 120,000 euros. I'm like, what? Why? So I can get like two base boxes for that. So, and sell one again. <laughs> so, um, I don't understand that. That's really overpriced. So, and just for this more sonorous sound and the naturally aspirated engine feeling, which is really cool. But at the end of the day, paying so much more money for that, whew, I don't know. Then again, if you think about the four-cylinder GTS model, this here is just a couple of thousand euros more expensive than the normal four-cylinder GTS model. So it's a little bit more about the equipment than about the engine choice. So to me, the cle most clever and uh, the most clever choice overall is still going for a base box star because this is really a car you can buy in the in the base version, or maybe then as as the T or something. Yeah, if you go for the GTS here in the box star or in the Cayman, then I think you can really think about if you directly take the six cylinder, the, the bigger engine then and have this more, you know, a little bit more elaborated feeling, so to say, for the car. I wouldn't do it if it's, if it would be way heavier, but it's actually not heavier, so there's 30 kilograms more, you, you do not feel that, you know. Maybe you, <laughs> you leave out a meal in the evening or so, and then you don't feel something of that anymore, and that's actually fine. So, very interesting impressions here from the Voxer so far. Let's head out to the racetrack. It's the Cayman. And now we're switching over to the 718 Cayman GTS 4.0. By the way, on long run, they will replace the four-cylinder GTS model with this six-cylinder GTS model. So the four-cylinder GTS will be no more. There will only be the six-cylinder GTS. So they really have like a from model to model, from base or T to S to GTS. They will even then hop in displacement from model to model. Well, Cayman or Boxster, question is then of course will you want to open the roof I mean design wise the Cayman looks of course a little bit more sportish and the roof line works a little bit better definitely because it is flat out and you have a little bit more space in the trunk yes but then you can cannot open it interestingly usually the convertible is heavier but in this case here 
Both Cayman and the Boxster are 1,405 kilograms with the GTS 4.0 version. Again, as I said, the six-cylinder not really way heavier than the four-cylinder, about 30 kilograms. But actually 20 kilograms is more from wheels and suspension. And just 10 to 10 kilograms actually just from the engine. Really interesting. In the rear, you can see the lamps are the same. Here, of course, this wing line is a little bit different than, yeah, I think just visually from the exterior, the Cayman is more beautiful, no doubt. But then again, driving with open top, nothing can beat the Boxster right there. And this one here is today reserved for the racetrack, so let's take it out. Welcome guys to the racetrack with the 780 Cayman GDS 4.0 and yes, this is a true race car, so it's also pretty loud in here, so 230, almost 240 kilometers an hour right here, hard on the brakes, Seco into Estoril, the banner is also here, back to second gear, dual clutching or double clutching from the car itself, keeping the seven, second gear, high off the rev limiter, back second gear. 7,800 RPM is the rev limiter. And you can mainly drive this car second and third gear indeed. That's also why the gear ratios the way they are. Wow, what a neutral handling this car has. Squeaking tires of course a little bit. And straight head out. Hard on the clutch as well, a little bit off the gas. kilometers now once again 125 miles 911 instructor car in front of us and way out again indeed in a lot of the corners I can go back to second gear and of course then the car gets a little bit lighter especially when you shift down weight of the car changes a little bit Look at the steering and the corners, the angle perfectly aligns in the corner and the steering wheel. Now this chicane is really special, you can get a little bit less slippery, I'm in the Sports Plus mode. Stability control is being drawn back. Now the chicane right there. And now this is a very long right corner, 120 kilometers an hour in the corner to the next start and stop straight on the ref limiter and high up well that was again 230 yeah this is a real race car no doubt and yeah it's a lot of fun driving with the manual gearbox of course when you do it for you know very first time here with this car on the racetrack, it's somewhat tricky when you like don't have too much practice with it. Most of the times we are with an automatic gearbox on the racetrack nowadays. Most cars you know have that nowadays, unless it's like a real race car. But I mean it's it's just more challenging, you know. It's a more purest driving experience. Now the wing of the 911 now for folded out. clutch experience you know when the car does it itself that's always pretty cool to hear and you can see when you when I keep it in a higher gear in the corner of course I cannot accelerate out that well but inside the corner the car stays a little bit calmer so it's definitely a trade-off to do that but here a lot of different chicanes are following then I go back to the second gear and I can really rev it up very high and I mean second gear and I'm still like one or twenty kilometers an hour in the second gear or something that's also the reason, you know, we've got also thought about some track time with this vehicle. Again, the Alcantara steering wheel is doing a phenomenal job because it's quite warm outside now and of course the hands are getting a little bit sweaty. So it's really important to have this Alcantara steering in the chicane here a little bit sideways. You also heard that 
really good grip on the tarmac. That's also why there's so much, you know, noise then coming. that I always wonder how can he sustain that with his stomach it's unbelievable I couldn't do that I mean I'm holding on to the steering wheel I know when I uh, you know where I'm turning exactly I hold the g-force on the steering wheel as well a little bit but wow how can you do that as a co-driver that's really astonishing and the laps with Mark Webber are still to come so Jonas will also join Mark Webber in the car um, I probably would get sick then as a co-driver <laughs> definitely also fun experience so yeah this is such a track car and again so better handling also than most of the other cars I've driven so far last time with the BMW um, 5 Series that's the M5 for example wow really impressive Now let's see how Mark performs on the track. Yeah, probably he'll beat me. Let's watch and probably we can all learn something. Hi, it's Mark Weber here. We're in the 718 Cayman Porsche at Estoril in Portugal. And the guys want me to do a few laps with the car on the limit. So we'll have a quick look at it. They want me to explain gear ratios and balance of the car and also a couple of cute things about the track. So here we are. They turn three, I'd imagine. Holding second gear up the hill. Inside hairpin here. Late apex. Look for a good exit. Third. Fourth, a little bit before the kink. You can do it after, it doesn't really matter. Then we have a big stop down the bottom here. Nice to get the braking right off course. Nice and smooth, the clutch coming out. Really nice turn in. Hold the apex a little bit longer, then let the car drift. Third gear combined exit. A little bit tricky there for the gear ratio, but down here braking. Second, again off camber. A little bit later apex, running a bit wider here. In between gears here, third gear into the chicane. Back to second, a little bit busy in here. This was super, super tight also in the Formula One car. So I tested here with the Benetton many years ago. Hold second gear here, little limiter. Nice to carry, second through here, it's easier. And short shift third. Hold third for the last corner, super, super long, come out wide a little bit. Then look for the exit. Around 170k on the exit there. Into fourth, on the front straight. Pretty relaxing down here goes downhill around about 250 k's end of straight before we start braking second gear through the tight turn one bit of curb on the exit there turn two is quite tricky make sure you get in nice and early and then downhill back to where we started the lap so it's a very very well balanced car Easy to drive on the limit, extremely versatile. You've also got the, the auto blip function in Sport or Sport Plus, so that's helping on the downshift if you want to, but my old habits, I still like to try and help it a little bit myself. Old school style. Engine likes the RPM up there. Of course, being normally aspirated. Back into this busy section again.
Traction control does a pretty good job on the bumps there. Even in a Formula One car, this corner is very long. There we go. And now we're joined by Mark Weber, former Formula One racing driver. And of course, I want to know what is your experience with this racetrack here? Well, actually, I tested here a Formula One car for the first time about 20 years ago. So, uh, yeah, year 2000 with Benetton. And uh, yeah, it was a uh, good memory for me. I was, of course, uh, pretty nervous. First time in an F1 car. It was very physical track back then, uh, some quick corners. But uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. And uh, I definitely slept well that night the first time after I drove an F1 car. I remember staying at the hotel here. The neck was a bit sore. But uh, yeah, it was uh, good memories. And I actually haven't been back since. So it's a huge oh. gap. Uh, never, never really tested here again. Uh, but until we come back here with Porsche, so it's uh, quite ironic. So how is it moving then the 718 here on the track now and comparing to your memory? Yeah, the good thing is that racing drivers don't have very good memory. So, uh, <laughs> you know, so, no, I have a pretty good memory, but uh, of course I know the track really well, but um, it doesn't take long for the photographic memory to sink into place. And uh, yeah, I mean, obviously I know the, the Porsche products pretty well. Of course I can trust them and get to the limit pretty quick. So. Uh, yeah, it was awesome to get back on track. It's a really cool little circuit, actually. It's got a little bit of character, of course. The straight's not super long, but it's quick enough to have a bit of fun on. And, uh, yeah, the last corner, as we know, has always been demanding corner uh, to get that right. So, yeah, it's good to be back. So in this vehicle now, we have the naturally aspirated engine, which is quite rare nowadays. We have a manual transmission. Mm -hmm. And it's also, let's say, a small and light car. Mm -hmm. And we also have this six-cylinder. Mm -hmm. So six-cylinder, manual transmission, and then, of course, you know, naturally aspirated. Yeah. How different is it, like, from, you know, when we take the contrary, like mm -hmm. automatic, four-cylinder, dual clutch, and so on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, still, you you could you could actually question. It's quite old school, right? Like you still, uh, like you say, I mean, your boxes in a lot of people's eyes still quite old school. Of course, uh, turbocharging is, is quite popular now, particularly, obviously, with Porsche. We're doing a good job on that. Uh, a lot of it's come from the racing, obviously, particularly with the 919. So uh, a lot of turbos uh, been used in, uh, in the 9, 911 platform. Um, but yeah, you, you have to, uh, you know, f for me, I think that uh, still, I feel at home with a manual gearbox. On the street, I prefer a, an automatic or PDK, just if I'm in mean, traffic jam or, or something like that, then it's more, uh, it's, it's just easier to use. Uh, you have to worry about changing the gear and mucking around with all that. But um, when, I, when I hit the track every now and again to use a manual box is, is, is good fun. Um, and of course, and, you know, high revving, normally aspirated is always, uh, it gives a bit more visceral for the driver when you've got, you know, the turbos can make the engine sound a little bit flatter, of course, but then you don't have the torque, obviously, with the, with the combustion engine. So it's, uh, sorry, uh, uh, normally aspirated engine. So it's always a bit of a trade-off. Um, but yeah, I think uh, the packaging of this, uh, the 718s uh, in this format with the GDSs here, it's sitting in a really good uh, position, uh, of course, clearly above the S and uh, above the below the GD4, and yeah, it's worked out well. This is a perfect track for them. Every day a car for sure, no question about that. And if you want to take it on the track, it's it's light, it's nimble, and it's dynamic. So how do you drive this car here properly? Is it more like like second, third gear, and to the ref limiter, or how do you properly yes. use this car? Yeah, I mean to be quick, I think with this car here, yeah, you're using definitely second and third gear a lot. Uh, in between the corners, the ratios are not too bad. There's a couple of places where you could have a slightly different ratio, but this is, of course, designed for the street, not for estrel uh, purpose build. I haven't got the race engineers here helping me with the gear ratios. But, uh, yeah, sometimes you can run the limiter a little bit, uh, which I do in the last sector, in, in second gear after the chicane, and then run through there in second, then third uh, through the last corner. So, yeah, the gearbox works well here. It's, it's pretty much in sync, and... Um, and it can tolerate that. You've got a, the, the car, again, typical Porsche, it's going to go. Uh, you can run it pretty hard, push it, push it to the limit, even though, of course, it's, a, it's not a GD2 RS, obviously, but it's still a car that uh, the qualities are still deep in, inside there that you can push the, the Porsche as hard as possible, and that's, uh, that's what you should be able to do. 
So you still have a very good resume with nine Formula One wins and also the three times three third place. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, anything else you're looking forward to? Maybe joining a racing series again, or is it like, you know, I'm retired, taking it, you know, rather slowly. Anything you're looking forward to? Yeah, I'm well looking forward to lots of things, but uh, yeah, it's not uh, racing is definitely over. Uh, I don't have a racing license anymore, and uh, yeah, I had a look. I did it for a long time. Really enjoyed it. I worked with great people. It was sensational. Uh, my Formula One times were, were super unique, and then uh, the opportunity to work with Porsche was was great fun. I had really good teammates. We had a real, real good laugh along the way, to say the least. And uh, yeah, I think that we helped the Porsche legacy as well along the way with some tremendous victories and some world championships, which was great. Great, but uh, you know, for me now, it's uh, I still enjoy my mountain biking. I enjoy recreational sports. Uh, I enjoy my aviation. I enjoy. Uh, I still I'm a sports. Nutter. I love going to sporting events. Uh, we were talking before about motocross and things like this, sprint cars in America as well. Um, so I'm doing lots of things which I couldn't do when I was competing. So uh, yeah, that's that's enjoyable. And uh, but a bit less about me and a bit more about well, you know, bad experiences. You know, I don't need to be proving anything to myself anymore. It's uh, it's I'm a bit more relaxed these days. And now to our conclusion for today with the Cayman and Boxster GTS 4.0. Very interesting ride today. We showed you so much variety, both of the open top and the Cayman racetrack experience and also just countryside routes. So it was a very interesting journey here for me, Thomas, and also Jonas behind the camera. I hope you really enjoyed it. So first of all, exterior wise, it still has a very classic signing, the GTS then, mainly with the black elements, unless you decide for example, to go then again with non-black wheels, but the typical GTS scheme that would be, but it's just a matter of preference. In the interior, it's really cool that we have this extensive Alcantara use. That's also what's meant to be in a sports car in any way. And, you know, other than that, it's also a little bit more sustainable and uses less animal material. Of course, it's also available somewhat for the base versions of this car, so you do not have to go for the G GTS for that. And overall, which version to pick and what about this difference, four cylinder, six cylinder? First of all, as I said earlier, this will also be available with the dual clutch transmission later on. So it's not about that you do the model difference to that. So both will be available. The menu gearbox, of course, for purest sports car fans is something very special. Here also very crisp gear input that was a lot of fun to drive. For everyday driving, if you use this car more also, you know, in your everyday driving life, of course, the dual clutch transmission will be more comfortable and you also will be way faster. So especially the acceleration is just way faster. And of course, on the racetrack here as well, unless you're maybe like, you know, the super most professional racing driver or something. Talking of that, by the way, so Mark Weber in one of the laps we did here, so I was like one minute 47. And I expect to be like 10 to 15 seconds slower than him and that was approximately right. So 10 seconds slower I was than Mark Weber on the racetrack. That's much, of course, but considering I have a lot of experience on racetracks like these, but don't do it like for living. Well, part of it, but not the race racetrack part, of course. Um, yeah, I think that was quite good just to just lose about 10 seconds as for that. Cayman Boxster difference, there's no weight difference, of course it's just a roof. I would always go for the convertible, although in the closed stays the Cayman is a little bit more beautiful. Then four cylinder against six cylinder, of course here you have the better sound. That's no doubt and that gives a lot of emotion and I felt, I mean, on the one hand it's laid out to be moved on the rev limiter, yes. On the other hand, you drive, especially in cruising countryside road, you drive a little bit more, you know, cozy and relaxed with the six cylinder with bigger displacement. That what I, you know, what I found actually cool with this car. So, engine wise, yeah, I think the six cylinder is to be preferred sound and you know, to me really, because it brings back this more sonorous and more elaborate feeling, so to say, to the car. From the general car concept as for price and so on. Yeah, it's not so much about six cylinder versus four cylinder because it's just a couple of thousand euros extra price if you compare the so far GTS version four cylinder and this now the six cylinder. And again, it will replace the four cylinder. So there will not be on a parallel level on the long run at the at the moment still yes, or when you watch this review at a later stage, it won't be anymore with the four cylinder. So 
then you will start with the normal Boxster or the Boxster T with the small engine, go for the S and you get the 2.5. And then here, the six-cylinder, four-liter engine with the GTS. This will then be the model lineup. To me, the Boxster and the Cayman is more the base model purist sports car. So I would actually pick it rather in a base trim or maybe as this T model to get the purest feeling. Um, then even the fabric seats, even a little bit cooler in summer than the Alcantara even. And with less equipment maybe to get more the purest feeling. Then it's also okay to have the four-cylinder. Yeah, you don't have the sound. But looking at the price, I mean, the GTS model is already quite expensive. And then if you add so many extras, told you earlier, almost 120,000 euros for some of the test vehicles here, that's ridiculous, really. So I rather prefer going like for a 60, 65k Boxster or Cayman. That's then still somewhat, you know, a good price performance ratio for Porsche. Of course, there are other cars which also can be considered if you want to have it a little bit less expensive. So a lot of thoughts and a lot of, to think to, uh, a lot of uh, things to think about. You can also tune into other episodes here of the 718 Boxer and the Cayman. You also should tune into the 718 versus 911 episode. That was a very interesting episode. And some competitors, yeah, for example, the BMW Z4 in the new generation, also four cylinder or six cylinder, both reviews are available. So I hope to see you there. And please leave us your feedback if you liked our very special feature for the day. And which version would you go for? Four cylinder, six cylinder, GTS, base version. Looking forward to your feedback. Cayman, Boxster, tell us all about it. And see you next time.